up? It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Candice is here. Hello. Good morning, Ting Ting. Oh it's God. afternoon. Morning. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Whenever people. Yeah. Yes. Good day. For us. Yeah. Yes. Good day. Uh, Candice Diller Bassett is here from Real Housewives of Potomac. Yes. I didn't even need to say your phone name. We just know you as Candice. Well, I like just Candice. Okay. Yes. That's my my brand is moving toward just Candice. Just so Candice. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, first of all, you got a lot going on. Yes. But let's start with some good positive things, yes. as always. Let's start positive. Yes. All right. Acting, killing yes. it. Thank Wait. you. So let's talk about these love scenes. Oh, my God. Do we have to? Uh, all black. It's so intense. <laughs> and so this is season two of Hush, Hush. on All Black. Um, I play a character named Selena Gibson. She's very opposite of me. She's very ballsy, very gutsy, kind of very gangster. You don't find yourself to be ballsy and gutsy? Not like Selena. Okay, a different okay. Yes. I'm I'm actually like really shy and more timid than mm -hmm. people think. And Selena is like, don't bleep with my bleep or <laughs> I'ma take your out of like she doesn't play games. Um, and yeah, the, the love scenes, when I first read the script, I was like, oh my God, can I even do this? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to Chris, like, uh, are we okay with this? <laughs> and he's like, you know, I support you, whatever you, you're going to be doing to get your career started. So it's, it's fine, but it's like, I have to psych myself up to do it. Mm -hmm. And luckily, like my, my scene partner, Lon Ray, who plays Terrell, my husband on the show is a very seasoned actor and a producer. So he like preps me and we talk about the scenes and make sure that we're both comfortable with what we're doing. That's great. And then what about I hold my breath partner? and do it. <laughs> which, which one? On the show. Who? There's no other um, steamy sex scenes or... Oh, I for see. Mm -hmm. I forgot, oh, now I you forgot. forgot. About that. Okay. So Selena, <laughs> Selena's past is definitely coming to the forefront in season two. And she has, she was in a relationship with a woman mm -hmm. before she met her husband. And so Paige comes back into the fold out of nowhere. Um, and you kind of see Selena, you see Selena like is softer this season. She's got more emotion in her face because she's dealing with like a long lost love. She was really in love with Paige. Okay. So you see her dealing with that and like her past coming to meet her present and how she grapples with that is interesting to watch. Well, listen, how did you prepare for those scenes? Because those were different for you. Um, for, I actually feel like the scenes with Terrell were harder. Right. Yeah, I don't know why, but like I, I didn't I didn't feel as much of the pressure. Okay. Maybe because I'm a woman. Right. I don't know, but I I So it's easier to do love scenes with another woman yeah. than with a man. Yeah, it didn't it it didn't feel I don't maybe I don't maybe because I'm I'm married to a man and that can kind of feel like cheating. Right. But I didn't feel like I was cheating with. Okay, so maybe in real life. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> uh, do I, am I in the lady pond in real life? Don't start that rumor. No, I don't. And and Ozion is who plays Paige. And uh -huh. she's she was super cool. She's a super talented music artist. So, like, I just felt comfortable with her. Do you and Chris watch the show together? No, he does not watch the show. <laughs> oh, so he hasn't even watched. Maybe he, secretly when you're not around. He's like, let me see what she's doing. He might. He might. I don't know. I don't feel like he does, but Chris can be kind of like <laughs> sneaky about stuff like that. Don't he say might that. be sneaking and watching <laughs> behind my back. And then when like when we're like we'll be drunk one night and he's like, "Yeah, I saw you <laughs> having bleep with so and so." I don't know, but I don't he's like, "Yeah, I just for my for my mental state, I don't know that I could watch you having sex with I could feel man. that. Yeah. You, you and know. I respect it. Mm -hmm. Like he came with me to the premiere and we watched I think it was just episode 1 and there was no sexy time in episode 1. You were like, so. "Lord, please." No. I was so nervous. <laughs> I actually talked to the producers and I was like, "Can we please like make sure that whatever episode that they show is not like me with my my ass hanging?" Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> to him well listen since you brought up Chris let's talk about this because I feel like you went through a lot I mean you've been on yeah. since season three. three yes and we've seen you go through a lot with Chris mm -hmm. on this show and with the other women on the show yes and I feel like sometimes you're very good at not showing exactly how you feel, even though they'll try to say you cry all the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And they do say you cry like on command. Yes, which is literally the opposite of like as an as a scripted actor. When it's time to cry on command, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. When I'm crying, I'm li I'm actually in an emotion. 
And when I have to cry on set for a scripted show, I have to go to the side and like pull my eyelids down and let the air go in them. And like I have a list of things that like make me emotional. I have to right. like read through those things to psych myself up to be emotional. What are some things on your list that make you emotional? Um, I don't do I. I don't know if I have it. So like I got into a really huge fight with one of my best friends in the world like two years ago and it like we didn't talk for two years wow so that like makes me really like <laughs> yeah that's awful so i i wrote like a bunch of notes about how i felt in that moment mm -hmm. and i i know that's part of what i read to cry on um Cruel Encounters, which is a, a movie I did for BET. I had to cry a lot in that movie. So I was reading like those notes for with about my best friend on that set. My mom, like a lot of my mom drama, all your like, mom definitely read knows through. how to get under your skin oh, too. She's <laughs> the best at it. So I'll read like I literally it's like I'll take like journal <laughs> in like my notes and I'll read through that to put myself in an emotional place. It feels like you guys are in a lot better space though. If anything, yeah. I do feel like this show may have helped your relationship. With in a weird way, yes. Um, what's funny is that when we first started the show, what I realized later is that my mom did not realize, or I don't, I don't think that she knew that I knew that she was a lot. If that makes sense, like she, <laughs> the way that I talked about her on the show is how I would like talk about her to her to right. our family members but she was so taken aback by like why are you saying that i'm loud or why are you saying that i am dramatic and it's like because you, you are like these are true statements and she just she wasn't prepared for me to speak about her that way mm -hmm. i guess so it took her a while to be okay with i guess talking about our real dynamic right on camera I think that might have been us, something you guys never really addressed if we really didn't. And I think she's it's really brought her into a space where she could be more communicative That's like, good. and more honest and open about her feelings about a lot of different things. How are she and Chris now? They're, they are fine. Like <laughs> they're never going to be. Like, oh, let's I'm gonna bake him cookies and we're gonna go out and leave our leave Candace at home. No. It's never gonna be like that. And I'm okay with that. But like they can be around each other, they can have small talk and it's fine. Okay. And they both love That's progress. Me, so <laughs> you're the common denominator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you're also on this journey of um IVF, which we've been watching. Yes. That could also change the dynamics too, if yes. there's a grandchild involved. Oh, and for sure. There's so the episode that's coming out on Sunday, um, the Mother's Day event. Yes. Um, the Mother's Day event. I, I was I watched it and I didn't see that I guess who is my mom talking to? She was talking to somebody about grandkids and she says, Oh, I'm ready for that. And she'd never said that to me. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, uh -huh, you are? <laughs> so that was exciting to to hear that, you know, she's ready to have grandkids. And we're working on it. So you we, want a boy or a girl? I used to say I wanted a girl first, mm -hmm. um, just because I think that girls are smarter than boys. <laughs> and I'm the oldest, and I feel like I've been a good rearer of my brother and my sister. Um, so I wanted a girl first. But I, I mean, I because we have chosen every aspect of the process from like retrieving the eggs to fertilizing the eggs and creating embryos mm -hmm. and freezing them it's been so regimented i kind of like the idea of being surprised right okay by the sex so doing the opposite for that yeah. how has the process been for you it's been good it's it's um because i know some people are like oh it's really i've never done that so i know yeah. for women listening um who are thinking about it yeah um is it painful? Because I've heard, I know you have to do like the a shots. A lot of injections. Yeah. yeah. It's it's taxing emotionally. It can be taxing physically because you are having to give yourself injections unless um, you have a lifestyle that allows your partner to do it for you every night. Right. I don't have that luxury because my husband's always at work. I'm always traveling. So I had to become comfortable 
with injecting myself. Ooh, that probably took some time oh my to God. get used to. The first time the I had to it. do it, Chris wasn't home. I had to FaceTime my nurse. Um, shout out to Sarah, my nurse. She's amazing. And she walked me through the whole process of how to pinch your stomach. Well, you... Um, when you're doing the hormonal injections before the egg retrieval, you can ice your stomach so mm-hmm. it's numb. So I would always ice my stomach. And then you have to pinch it and stick the needle in to in- insert the medicine. And it I'm not a needle person. When yeah, I get no my blood is. drawn, I'm turning <laughs> the other way. No one's a needle person. Yeah, no. But it's not that bad. Like... That's, okay. that's when my inner gangster came out. Like, Can you use numbing cream or you, you're not allowed to do that? I No. You can ice, but okay. no n- numbing cream, no. But okay. the uh, when you I iced for five minutes and mm-hmm. it was numb. Okay. But there were some days where I was traveling and I didn't have ice, so I had to just like go cold turkey. Do that Ouch. shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. But the needles are tiny. Okay. And it's, good. It's not that bad. And once you're like once you've done it a few times, it's like clockwork. And then one of my friends used to say to me, "This is all preparation for you becoming a mother. Like you are already a mom because you are." You're already a good mom because you were already t- making sacrifices mm-hmm. for your child. That's a great way to think of it. Yeah. So I thought of it as this is me making these painful ish sacrifices for my babies. And it just, you just, you do it and you keep moving. Well, let's get into some other things that have been going on with you, yes. Candace. Well, let's start off with Chris since we're talking relationships, babies, yeah. Chris. Um, you guys went through a lot, I feel like, on the show as far as people looking at your relationship, thinking that he was cheating on you yeah. and that he had gotten a whole nother woman pregnant. Like, and so, what? yes. Yeah. And then come to find out the whole thing somebody made up. Oh my God, today. Right, a story. And people yeah. really did not believe you mm-hmm. or, or believe him. Mm-hmm. Was there a time that you didn't believe him? Because no. this woman said these things. And yeah. I think as a woman, even though we, you know, some strangers saying something. Yeah. But as a woman, sometimes you're like, oh, did, did could that happen? be potentially? Yeah. No, I could see that. I could see how someone who's not in my situation could look at it and think, hmm, I wonder if she ever considered that this was true. It was just so preposterous because I know my husband. I have to beg him to leave the house and go (laughs) downtown to D.C. to take me to dinner. He wants to, like, he'll make me dinner at home or he wants to, like, stay around the house. He's a homebody. So you mean to tell me this man got on a flight and flew to wherever this lady was to repeatedly have sexy time with her and get her pregnant? I can't get him on a flight. He didn't have a passport until I met him. Wow. So that was, it was like, (laughs) there were just so many preposterous bullet points that just made it untrue. I know where Chris is all the time because we're constantly talking. You're like, how could he have even done that? When when did you have time to do any of, like, and none of these thoughts even went through my head because it just, it just is not something that, he would do what did your mom say when this was all happening she was she was angry she was like who is this bleep 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 Ah, these people are crazy they're just lying on Chris she knew it was a lie too yeah like she they have they had their issue my my mom is just my mom wants me to herself right but (laughs) and when I got married it's like now I'm not just yours Uh, you have to share me with my husband Mm -hmm. but she knows Chris's character she knows he's a good person right and so does everyone. She didn't believe that at all. Okay, yeah. so that's good. Yeah. It was, it just, it was almost laughable. Did it you really ever think was. about suing for defamation or even just to make a point? Because I don't know if yeah. she would have anything. Exactly. But... Um, I mean, yes, for, for a second we did, but we're not litigious people at all. Like, I don't like... I don't like the law. I yeah. don't like the police. I don't want to, have I don't to, go want to court get court involved. Right. Unless it's for... somebody forcing me to exactly. go. So it's, that's just not our thing and there have been many opportunities where we could have entertained mm-hmm. suing lots of different people <laughs> for defamation and other things um and it's just for for what it's like it's disturbing our peace right and when we can just pray about it and know that god is covering us and it will pass all right, so maybe the most hurtful thing was how the other women on the show reacted. For sure. When this news broke, because you would want to know that you had the support yes. of your friends, but yeah. it felt like it was ha, ha, ha. nice What's fodder for... You. It was absolutely fodder, mm-hmm. yes. Shout out to the Two Broke Girls podcast. Love you, <laughs> love y'all to death. They, um, 
Yeah, they took the opportunity to make it a <laughs> to make it a moment on as for content for their their show. And you and Robin had had a pretty good relationship. Yeah. Um, up until then and mm -hmm. yeah okay so I can see why that can be hurtful because sometimes when I watch the scenes and they're like she cries on command mm -hmm. but there might be things that really did hurt you deeper than people might know No, yeah I well one thing I will say is that I think more often than not my reactions are misconstrued as anger when 98% of the time I'm hurt and I'm a human. I respond in different ways than you do or mm -hmm. than, you know, than anyone else in this room might to adversity. When I'm hurt, I cry. When I'm angry, I cry. When I'm happy, I cry. That is my emotion of choice. That's, that's, that's what I'm programmed to do. Mm -hmm. So much of, especially the, the podcast stuff and like even just the, the way that, I could use Robin as an as, as an example. The way that she's chosen to kind of go about expressing herself as a whole this season with me has been really hurtful. It feels like Robin's very defensive. Incredibly. Um, with the situation with her husband, she doesn't really want to talk about it and address yeah. it. Now that that's her husband again. Juan. Yes. yes. Uh, but it feels like she has a lot of things that maybe she's not dealing with. And then it's hard for her to hear about it from other people. Yes. Um, I do think that we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. um, I and I'm OK with that because it's it's a marriage and in a marriage. Yes, we're on a TV show, but protect the marriage first. Yeah. Yes. I think that's that has that has to be, especially in this space, the name of the game. I wasn't looking for Robin to tell us all her business. People a lot of people had question marks when they got engaged again mm -hmm. and then they took forever to get married again and I was like let them live their lives this this has worked for them it works for their children I'm cool with that I only took issue when she decided to wait and hold this information for Patreon for Patreon <laughs> when <laughs> you're paid on this yeah. show right behind a paywall when you're paid a lot of money mm -hmm. to talk about your life on this show and you watched your friend drag my husband through the mud for a lie and you had a real situation going on. Right. That was my issue. And I tweeted about it. And, Ooh, and that's the thing that keeps on getting brought up. Yes. And actually on this last Strangely. episode, you and, and Robin sat down. We did. And talked about your tweets. Yes. And how she had an issue with you going to Twitter. Right. To discuss what's happening. Yes. And so let's uh, talk about that mm -hmm. and, and what your thoughts are in response to what she felt. Mm -hmm. You could you shouldn't have done that. That's something you could have, you know, brought onto the show and mm -hmm. said those things to her instead of taking it to Twitter. Mm hmm um, I, I stand by what I said. What I said on Twitter, I would have and did in uh, a variation to her face. I said it to her face. It's not something that I mm -hmm. I felt like I was like sneaking and stabbing her in her back. I said what the world was saying. Right. I said what the entire cast was saying. We all had thoughts and fe strong feelings about her choice. Um, and furthermore, you know, we've watched other people cast members malign her on Twitter mm -hmm. um, in their confessionals behind her back. Her best friend has body shamed her. Right. Um, there's been a lot that has been said over the years about Robin. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot that's been said about all of uh, us everybody. over that's the years. kind of what y'all sign up it's for. It's the name of the game. Yeah. <laughs> but you're choosing to really zero in on my, I'm calling it my, my Twitter op-ed my opinion there was there I, there was no emotion i wasn't angry or upset i was stating facts i was stating my feelings and and facts um and i just feel like she's using it as a way to i think distract from the issue which right. is that you you betrayed your cast you betrayed the people that pay you to talk about your life there were people who really felt like she shouldn't be on the show anymore. I remember Andy Cohen being really upset with her. Yeah, everybody was. Right. Yes. Her, yeah. her bosses that sign her checks were upset with her. Everybody was pissed. But you were, you were still willing to work things out with her. Yes, because 
I have always maintained, even in the face of, you know, cast the cast and the audience for years think saying that, you know, Robin should be fired. She's boring. She shouldn't be here. I've always maintained that Robin was valuable to our cast. Mm -hmm. You can't have seven Candaces. You can't have seven Karen Hugers. You need diversity. And Robin was that person that could be a go between right. with all of us. She was often the most level headed, um, often the one that could break the ice and bring people together. And that's valuable on a cast of, you know, seven, eight dynamic, super opinionated women. And she did that and wore that role very well. Mm -hmm. So I never felt like she should be fired. I never felt like she um, she needed to be removed from our group. She was valuable to our group. I still have never advocated for her to be fired. Mm -hmm. Again, I will say again, I have never advocated for Robin to be fired. <laughs> when I spoke to our boss, Andy Cohen, about um, her paywall debacle, I was simply going to him to say, what do you think about this? Here are my thoughts about it. Okay. And for context, I talk to Andy all the time about any number of things that are happening in the Bravo mm -hmm. sphere. Um, a lot of times it is centered around like, like race issues or... Things in that in that vein, like when the um, the Salt Lake City girl, the woman that the one season woman, uh, I know what you're talking about. Name. Yeah, when when I'm, that yeah. stuff came out and she was seemingly coming out as sort of having racist behaviors, I texted Andy and said, "What do you, what do you guys think about this? Like, what's happening with this?" Right, you're gonna bring it to him. Yeah, and people on this um, particular on Potomac talk about colorism issues. Do you think there are colorism issues? on Real Housewives of Potomac. So as I said um, at the reunion last year, I personally cannot say that any of my castmates are colorist. Do I think that colorism exists in our universe? Yes. Um, do I think that acknowledging that it exists um, could be a start to moving forward? Yes. And that is all that I was asking for, was acknowledgement mm -hmm. from... Um, these very intelligent, very astute, very um, woke women, they purport themselves to be very woke mm -hmm. women, um, to just have an acknowledgement that colorism is a mantle that exists and should be torn down. And some of them could not do that. That was disappointing. But I, I honestly regret that I even brought it up because we clearly are not equipped as a group to have a healthy discussion about colorism. Right. And... You know, but I, the fans are doing okay it. That. The fans are doing it. One, I, I love our fans because I think Potomac has some of the most intelligent fans. Um, they love to write think pieces <laughs> on the people, <laughs> me being the people, and, and on all of us. And I, I think it um, it takes this this little reality show to another level. It really is a part of pop culture. It's you know a part what? of political culture. Since we're talking about these think pieces, there are people who are saying this season of Potomac has been so divided mm -hmm. and that certain things, it's like you guys can't seem to move past it. Yeah. You've said that you would never have wanted to see Robin get fired. Is there anybody yeah. you feel like should go? Uh, yes, but I'm not going to say. <laughs> Is it somebody we could guess? If we thought about it for a second, if yes, you if we, you could you could probably guess, okay. I but I I'm not going to comment. But I do think that this is what I will say. I think that these shows are um, are a, a beautiful part of pop and political culture. They have re like Nene Leakes is in the the museum the Museum of African American History and Culture. Right. Okay. Like we are cemented as a a universe in pop culture. I think that we are very important to the culture. I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunities opportunities that I've had within this universe. Um, but it's a show about women and friendships and conflict and resolution. And if we can't resolve issues um, when we're the ones that start the issues, then maybe we should have a seat. Do you think you're good at resolving issues? I do. Okay. I think that in the wake of even my my most angst and my my most anger, 
I think that I have what it takes to move forward mm -hmm. when it's when it's necessary. But I it, it's I'm not just going to excuse horrible behavior. Okay, well speaking of that, Giselle. Okay, it seems like there has been no resolution, even for the Mother's Day event that you had. You did not invite Giselle. You I invited Rob, and she chose not to come. Right. Um, and you understood that, and yes. you said you can respect that. It, yes. it made sense to you. Mm -hmm. But Giselle was not invited. You even invited Ashley, who you said, um, she's a great mom. Yes. Even but though. she's a, What did I say? She's a messy bitch or something. Yeah, she's yeah. a messy bitch, but she's yeah. a great mom. Yes, she and is. You, and you did invite her. And Ashley, I think that's kind of her role on the show. Yeah. That maybe she enjoys, like, stirring things up. Absolutely. And, and she's a great sparring partner. I, I said, I think, on an episode of Watch What Happens Live that um, our love language is arguing. And we can argue and come back from it. And we've always been able to come back from it. Right. Um, Why do you think you're able to do that with Ashley? Um, what is it about her and your arguments that you're able to come back? I think that Ashley uh, has a, a general respect. I think we have a mutual respect for one another. I think that she does not see herself as um, greater or bigger than she is. Um, I think that she understands fully how to play the game and show up and do her job. Mm -hmm. um, and and she's she's she has the, she has the humility that some of the others maybe do not. From just an opinion, why do you think that Ashley is not ready to get divorced? Is it just a financial thing you think or is there more to it? I, no, I definitely think that um and I've said this to her. I think that she she has ad so admittedly she's admitted to having daddy issues. I think that um her husband was someone that came into her life at a time when she needed to be rescued and needed to feel like this is a man who is going to fill a void that my father left. And that can be a very tough bond mm -hmm. to break. Um, he essentially saved her right. and put her in a position to be successful. And that can be difficult to, that's a t difficult tie to break. I, I understand. And then they have children together now. Yeah. And I, you know, he, and this is not, I don't say this in a shady way, but he sort of raised her up, like, and, mm -hmm. and helped her become a woman. Right. So I get her having hesitation in um, breaking that bond. Right. Because it doesn't feel like she him. wants to be with him. No. But she just. It's a, a, it's a tie that is just difficult for her to break. And I get it, but I also am really rooting for her. Right. To, to run. And I don't feel like you're a fan of um, her ex either. <laughs> no comment. Oh, uh, is it? You're not allowed to speak on him at all, right? Is it? No, the, I can speak on him. I and, just is there really? Is there a lawsuit? There is a lawsuit. Okay. Yes. Um, I can speak on him. I just choose not to. Okay. Yeah. He's not. Oh, worth I it. can't believe that's still going on. It's really gross. All yeah. right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That Thank has you. to be a little stressful to have to deal with. Yeah. Does you think Ashley is? How does she feel <laughs> about it? Has she said like? I don't know why he's. Um, she has really taken a hands-off approach. She she says to me that she knows nothing about it. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about it, and I I believe her. Okay. Um, only because the Ashley that I know, if she had information, she's but she'd can't be hold going it. to the rooftop. <laughs> she'd be going to the lectern, tapping on the mic, and giving church announcements. <laughs> she would be talking about it, um, and she's not. So I I I believe that she's not privy to most or any of what's happening now it's fine now let's get back to Giselle because that's what we were discussing mm -hmm. do you see any way forward with Giselle like for you guys to ever if she were to come to you and apologize would that matter to you yeah that's all it takes mm -hmm. that's it I need I just I am not I'm not fake I'm not an ass kisser I don't need her to lead me anywhere I don't know if some of these other women are in a position to feel like they need her to um, to be successful on the show. I'm an independent thinker, mm -hmm. and I always have been. I'm not going to sacrifice that for anyone, the least of all her. Um, if she wanted to be a woman and be a grown woman and come to me and finally say um, what her true issue is, 
and apologize and walk back the heinous and disgusting things she said about my husband, I would entertain a, a cordial relationship with her. What do you think her true issue is? You have to ask her. You have no idea. Is there any? I have an idea, but it's not It's not for me to say. Okay. All right. You think Michael could ever, uh, I mean, sorry, Chris could ever forgive her? Um, Because he do not like that no, at all. He's, and it's really unfortunate because I, I've never really seen him so uncomfortable. Um, and I've known him for over 10 years now as even as a friend I've never seen him like that and I I saw him like after he got divorced and he was dealing with his ex-wife and that was a lot to, to witness as his friend um I've never seen him this uncomfortable mm-hmm. um so I don't know I think that you know he's a man and he's not he's not going to have the same emotion that I would have but he's never going to be comfortable around her. Now, you've also said you feel like they're trying to ice you off the show. So I didn't see it until uh, Mr. Kingdom Reign Entertainment, Carlos King. Uh, I saw his. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> uh, until he did that uh, very, um, very well thought out um, YouTube live about it. And. You know, I can't say that I disagree with some of the motives. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did say in one episode of Austin when I was sitting with Karen and neck rolls um, that it, it was clear to me then that she was in a space where if she did not acknowledge me, that I would go away. That was a code that was code for saying she was she was trying to ice me out. Um, I, I don't want to accuse anyone else of jumping on that bandwagon. Um, but it does feel like she thinks that she has the power to remove me from the show. Right. Um, and just like, you know, I can't call Andy Cohen and tell him to fire Robin. Um, she, she doesn't have that power. I don't know who gave her the impression that she does. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, it's whack for lack of a better word. It's, it's lame that that's, you are so unable to own your poor behavior that you would now result to this pearl clutching and victimization of yourself instead of just saying, I'm sorry. So do you agree with, with what people are saying that this season has been, really, really divisive. Um, can you look at that from the fans' perspectives that yeah. some people are saying it's even hard to watch? Um, I Well, I hate to hear that. And, you know, I, I will apologize on behalf of the cast to our audience because our show, all of these shows are meant to be um, an escape for you. It's meant to be a, a place for you to come and, you know, either see yourself or, you know, see the craziness that helps you to escape from whatever's happening in your life. And when it's not doing that, it, it does give me pause and it makes me sad because that's what I want for a lot of our fans. Um, it felt div- divisive when we were shooting it. Right. Um, so now to see it play out, it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's exactly how it felt. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful though. I think that, it was nice to see in this past episode the Mother's Day event. That was beautiful. To see everybody kind of come and together. And by the way, where and... was that? So the perfume and... Yes, yeah, so Parfums Talk to me about de Marley. That. Yes, so they are a beautiful um, perfume house from France. Um, I met them middle of last year when they were releasing my favorite fragrance, Valaya. I'm actually wearing it right now. Uh, They actually have a uh, boutique in meatpacking. So anyone that's in the New York area, you should check out their boutique. It's stunning. I think it's 825 Washington Street. Uh, I was just around over there. That's where the Whitney Museum is. Yes. Okay. You should go. I'll connect you with their PR. I'll definitely head over there. Yes. Roll the carpet out for you. (laughs) Um, But they're just a a beautiful, stunning brand. Um, 
that's all about aesthetics. I love everything about French culture and French design. The bottle alone, the Parfums de Marly bottle alone is like a piece of art. Like I I finished a bottle of Valaya and I, I'm not, I can't throw the bottle the away. Bottle. They, there's great. a Swarovski <laughs> crystal like in the bottle. It's heavy. <laughs> it's a substantial bottle. And just the, the brand feels feminine. It feels... Um, sexy. It makes you feel however you want to feel. Mm. So it was really nice to be able to partner with them for this Mother's Day event. It was a have beautiful, be- like breathtaking. It. Thank you. When you see the table set up. Yes. And I love that the Grand Dame was there first. Yes, right? Because I know she has her perfume. Yes. So that was nice for her to be like, okay. This is beautiful. And Karen is very particular. I know, she, she is. She has very high standards. <laughs> so I was really happy to see that she was pleased. And then they didn't show this part, but I actually did like a special dedication to Karen's mother oh, um, who nice. has passed away um, and and I, I was always kind of concerned because I wanted to, to, to do this event for a long time but I always thought about how would I make Karen feel included um, with her mother being passed on and it was a really sweet um, dedication we actually um, partnered with the Alzheimer's Association and Great. Parfums de Marley made a donation on behalf of Karen's mother to the Alzheimer's Association. Oh, that's beautiful. See, yeah. y'all have these amazing moments too because even the sexual assault um, yes. when Karen the pave event. put together that event, yeah. I thought that was so powerful. It was. I have chills. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even um, Mia's story, I didn't know she that got She got up and walked right out there. I mean, that was... Yeah. And that, to see you go around the room and everybody has Which a story. is insane. And th- that's not something that we have as a group have ever talked about. Right. So to watch that and see like, oh my gosh, Robin has had a personal experience. Ashley's had an experience. Mia, it, it re- and then we've all heard of, of Karen's experiences as well. It really underscores how important it is to have conversations with your girlfriends, with your daughters about sexual assault and what it what it is because there's I think this this discrepancy on what exactly sexual yeah, assault it was like why did is. I put my like you blame yeah. yourself yes like what was I doing there it's, or you're embarrassed yeah. as if you did I felt that shame it's yeah. the shame is the the worst part and it, it's what keeps you silent is feeling like you don't want to embarrass your family or embarrass yourself embarrass the per the, the person who assailed you even so that was beautiful it was beautiful yeah, that to watch. was so, and that's why there's that balance too because there are some really beautiful pockets beautiful like where you can see you know despite all the differences that people have yes. there's a lot of things that we all can that connect on us. and for yeah. our for the people who are watching mm-hmm. to be able to see that and also i can just imagine people at home like that really touch them I got so many i got emails i got dms people were just tweeting me outright just saying, you know, I had a similar experience and thanking me for talking about mine. It just it's 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 crazy that so many women and men too mm-hmm. have these experiences and you don't realize how connected you are to people, albeit in a traumatic way. But right. um it's 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 interesting to see. Yeah. You know what else I love about and this is why they couldn't ice you out anyway. Uh-oh. Your singing career. <laughs> I mean, that has been so special for you. Just to see everything take off the way that it has. First of all, you really could sing. Thank you. And the fact that you'll sing on the spot. (laughs) If Nicki Minaj says... Oh, my God. Don't remind me. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I mean, that which was incredible to see her sitting there. And the the fact that she's such a fan of the franchise. I feel like y'all got to figure it out. Right. You know what I mean? Like, y'all have got to figure it out, the whole cast. But just to be able to see you sing. And then even at your Mother's Day um, event that you had, your your quick dedication to everybody there was beautiful. But Thank also you. the success that you've had going on tour. Thank you. Um, so yes. congratulations. I want to make sure we definitely acknowledge that. Thank you. Yeah, it's been uh, a whirlwind. It's been like a dream come true. Um, and I have to just shout out and thank Bravo because and Andy. Because Andy was like <laughs> really like going up for Drive Back when it first came out. And he texted me. When it first came out and was like, drive back is such an earworm. I can't stop singing it. <laughs> and, you know, I did watch what happens live recently. And in between the, the commercial breaks, they're playing my music. Right. They they So Bravo has been really, really supportive of this journey and uh, wanting to see me do well and featuring what I'm doing with my music. Um, and that's been a huge part of it. 
um, Tamar Braxton. Yeah. He did some dates. Hey, Tamar. So I was only supposed to do the DC show, the okay. Fillmore show in DC. And I ended up doing like four or five dates. I know that felt amazing. It was, those were some sold out shows. They were. She sold out every show. She just, I think she's doing Detroit um, this weekend. So if there are tickets available, you should get those tickets, you guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, she sold out all her shows. Her team is amazing. She's like a girl's girl. Like she really wants to make sure that everyone around her is good, is taken care of. Um, she really likes my set, which is like, That's so oh nice. God. I love that. Thanks. Yeah, no, she's she was awesome. It was so much fun. And let's just her. think about when you were on there making your first video to where you are now. Crazy. That's good to have that chronicle just yeah. for you to have. That's the most special part about this show is that you've really seen me grow up. You saw me you know, go from living in my little townhouse, my little investment mm -hmm. property that my mom helped me buy, to getting married and planning my family, buying my first home with my husband, launching a music career, launching an acting career, um, various business endeavors. Like, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful that I will always have this to go back and remind me of where I was. And then when I have kids, like, I think about now, like, oh, shit, my kids are going to see this one. <laughs> but I'm proud of it. Because, yeah, you know, you for better be. or for worse. You should be proud. Thank you. I, I really, you know, when I'm crying, when I'm cussing, I mean it. And I, I, I like that, you know, regardless of how it may come off to people, I can sleep at night because I know that I've been authentic to right. myself. You've yeah. done so many things. I think people uh, may not even know the full story of, of all the different spaces mm -hmm. that you're able to occupy. Just, yeah. you know, education-wise, talent-wise. Yeah. And so that's why I want to make sure that, thank you, you know, y'all yes. handle your business well, the way you need to be. From one Jane of all trades to another. Because well, you, you. <laughs> you are also doing a lot of things, yes. We, you know, because I, I see some of the comments, and I know people will be coming at you. Yes. You know, they but, love to. But yes. then some people support you and come yeah. at other cast members. Yeah. And, so, and I know you completely get it. It balances out. And, you know, when I first started the show, it was a lot because I was used to being loved by everybody and then to go from that to being hated by everybody was a, a, a huge um, adjustment for me. But yeah, I've, I've kind of come back to the middle and, and realized that there's love and hate for everyone. Um, being polarizing, I've learned to embrace it and sort of lean into it a little bit, which is fun to kind of troll the... You can be the heel. Yeah. That's what they call it. The yes. <laughs> troll when, the people. When you watch some of the episodes, do you sometimes feel like... Mm, Maybe, like, I need to take some accountability for this or there's some ways I could have handled this better. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the We experience a show three times, like I said. So when we're watching it back, that is when I have more introspective moments than I do when we're shooting it. Because right. you're kind of you're in it. In it. <laughs> and, yeah, there are things that I think to myself, well, could I have said this differently? Could I have tried to understand her or him, my husband, differently. Yeah. And then and then I watch another episode and like the girl I thought I could apologize to was talking shit about me and I'm like, okay, you can kiss my ass. I know, isn't that crazy that yes. sometimes you didn't know that happened? Yeah. And then you see an episode and you're like, now wait, wait a, a minute. minute. I thought we was cool. Right. You was yeah. we was bonding and then Yeah. Yeah. With and with Robin especially, there I've had a lot of back and forth in my head about what did I do mm -hmm. and what could I have done differently. Um, but then I'm, you know, you see clips of her being very flippant or, you know, basically saying that our friendship was over when I sent my tweets. And it's like, the tweets huh? weren't that bad. They weren't. I, I didn't think it was. I mean, it, it is what everybody was saying. You didn't. Exactly. But, yeah. I, but I also feel like she's in a space right now where she's hurting. For and, sure. And so I think, um. It feel, it's always been kind of hard for her to be open, yeah. it seems like, about those things. Yes, and I get that, which is why... Like, she's I've like, I don't want an apology. Her. I don't want an apology. Yes. yeah. That I don't know what it is that she wants. Is it... I don't know either. That, and that's that's the frustrating part, is I don't know either. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I can, I can own that she was hurt by my tweets, even though... I think that's ridiculous when everybody was, everyone was saying 
something about it. But okay, you were hurt by the tweets. Okay. Because it was you. Because it was me. But I mean, I was hurt when you brought a speaker to a dinner table to embarrass me and try to shame me for um, an Instagram live. And we we talked about that and didn't really talk about it because Mm -hmm. at the time someone close to her had passed away. So that kind of took over the conversation. She never really apologized to me for that. And I was okay with that. Yeah, I moved on because I felt like our friendship was stronger than her being petty and and trying to hurt me. It she feels was like trying she's to hurt taking me. her hurt out on the wrong person. Maybe she's yeah. not able to place it where it belongs in, in her home discussion with where, her husband. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said it. I yes. didn't have to say it. What yes. about Neca? How are you guys? After? We're good. Mm-hmm. Um, How I, do you feel about her on the show? I am excited for you all to get to know her more. And I was nervous because, like, you know, we're almost halfway through the season and we knew nothing about her. Right. Um, but this past episode, she does talk about her family a little bit and her dad. And um, she's with her sister, who I was at my Mother's Day event. Very, I love her sister. She's very sweet. Um, so I just, I want her to not go out sad and, like, arguing about nonsense. Right. As she has been. Um, but she's she she still has some some proving to do. It's her first season. Does she come like for advice? Like, what do you think I should be doing? Because it is a groove that you have to get into yes. when you join a cast yes. that's been together. Established. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, she hasn't really come to me for advice. I've get, I've volunteered a few things like I remember after the pickleball event, um, <laughs> we were leaving, and I, she came out, and I called her to my car, and I was like, girl, like, you, you can't be going out like that, like, <laughs> hollering and cussing. Like, we don't, we're getting to know you. Like, there's yeah. a better way to do this. So I remember saying that to her. Um, but it's also hard and weird because Wendy – is my actual friend mm-hmm. and has been there for me and supported me through a lot on this show. Um, so I'm. It's like a weird place to be in. And they, did they beefing. know each other before the show? It's it's <laughs> unclear. I don't know. I like trying to get you to give me a scoop. I, I don't. I don't know. I think they. I think they knew of one another. Okay. But did not know each other because, um, Wendy's sisters friend is related to NECA's husband or something like that. Something, some yes. construed, okay. Yes, some like sixth degree of separation. It felt like one of the most fun times you had, and I laughed at the way you were laughing, uh, Karen's birthday. Oh, yeah. Triple 20s. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and her dancing. Oh, my God. <laughs> as soon as she said you were, when I say you were dying, yes. laughing, watching everything transpire. She's... Well, the Karen, shout out to Karen. She has been the comic relief. She is amazing. All season. Mm-hmm. And she's, you know, as she says in her tagline, she rides the fence and we are humping her, whatever she says. <laughs> yes, Karen, we're all humping you, girl. <laughs> yes, that's accurate. Uh-huh. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming through. You know, I had to make sure I saw my girl Candace you. while you're in New York. And Very just congratulations on everything. I'm going to be following and watching what happens as the season plays out. Is everything yes. filmed already? Everything's done. Except we, the reunion? Reunion is coming up soon. How you feeling? I'm ready. I'm ready to <laughs> say. You know I stay ready to say what I got to say, out, honey. You and Ashley, I think that might have been one of the most classic reunion moments. Which um, Where? Talking about your mom helping you with your... Oh, and then, yes. Yeah, that was a classic moment, yeah. I think, forever. <laughs> <laughs> that goes down in reunion well, history. You know, facts are more interesting than fiction. <laughs> but at least she could take it. You do that, she yeah. could take it, and y'all move on. And that's why I think we, we work, because yeah. we can both handle the heat, and we don't go so low. Right. Yeah, so you can always come back. When okay. You don't go too low. When so, is yeah. the reunion get, um, being filmed? Soon. I can't say when. Okay. But it's it's coming up. Like we're we're getting you know our dresses and stuff ready. We have our color, our theme. We have our theme. You've been having some great outfits too, by Thank the way. You. In, yeah. So. Yeah. I so I was bouncing around New York yesterday and the day before. And, I saw the and, red. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't posted like the full red look yet, so I'm excited for everybody to see the full look. But yeah, that's the fun part about this show too and doing press and coming to see people like you because you get to like 
Play around. Yeah. With the fashion. Have some fun. Shout out to my stylist, Brian Adrian. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Candice. I really do appreciate you. Thank I'm going to be you. watching. Yes. So Let me know your thoughts. I, I certainly will. <laughs> I might have to take to Twitter. Yes. Okay. Come <laughs> join me. Come be a disaster <laughs> with me I'll on Twitter. I'll come be a disaster with you. I'm going to go retweet <laughs> some Candice stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. All right. It's way up. Make sure y'all guys tune in Real Housewives of Potomac. I've been tuned in since season one. Yes.